The Aung Sa Chung and Lin Hua Yin arrived in the United States in the summer of 1924. They decided to go first to Cornell University. We don't know exactly why they came to Cornell, I guess. Uh, they, were st they took drawing and they took mathematics courses at Cornell. And these are the transcripts of the grades of the courses they took. From Cornell, they traveled to Philadelphia and enrolled at the University of Pennsylvania. Liang Sichang registered as a student of architecture and Lin Huayin joined the Fine Arts Department, both under the School of Design. A hundred years ago, the core concept in architecture education was Beaux Arts, a neoclassical architectural style taught at the École de Beaux Arts in Paris. Many of the professors of architecture at American universities were graduates of the École. Among them was Paul Crett, the man responsible for making the University of Pennsylvania's architecture department the most prestigious in the country. And so many Chinese, young Chinese students who, who qualified were brought to the States to study. And um, the best place to study architecture was Penn because of Paul Cray. Many students from China were enrolled in the University of Pennsylvania's School of Design. So here we are in our reading room, so we could take a look at some of the folders that are inside and, and discover some of the history that's here. Yeah. Yeah. The archive of the University of Pennsylvania's School of Design reveals that the first Chinese student to study there was Zhu Bin from Guangdong in 1918. Others who followed included Zhao Shen, Yang Tingbao, Chen Zhe, Tung Jun, and, of course, Liang Sicheng. All of them would go on to enjoy outstanding careers in China, either as architects or as professors of architecture. From 1918 until Liang Sicheng graduated in 1927, 25 Chinese students studied at the university's School of Design. And in this, you see many Ds. And nowadays, we think of a D as a very bad grade. But uh, in this period, in the 1920s, D meant distinction. This was a top grade. This was an A. Uh, and showed real excellence in design. In the classical approach to architecture education that had originated in Paris, students were expected to practice the classical architectural drawing technique constantly. That you don't try to get finished color in one wash. You do it over five washes or ten washes. It's a tough life actually <laughs> because the curriculum is very heavy uh, and actually I look at the uh, registration form and the curriculum and all the course syllabi. It usually took them 35 to about 40 hours a week just for lecture. And going to classes. Architecture students typically spent 60 hours a week studying and much of that time was devoted to drawing. And this is just a repeated practice and practice and practice and you do that and this professor come and do it again. They give you a very short time, maybe just about three hours, maybe 12 hours to finish something. In a letter to his father, Liang Sicheng complained of being fearful about his prospects. You feel that your talent does not match your dreams and that all the monotonous work you have to do will turn you into a draftsman. This feeling is a sign your studies are progressing. This news makes me very happy. Mencius said, A carpenter or a carriage maker can give someone a compass or a square, but he cannot give them skill. All that a school can teach its students are externalities like the use of a compass or a square. If the student is clever, he will discover when he leaves school that this is the root of his learning. I hope this will be useful to you. Despite being denied the opportunity to enroll as a student in the University of Pennsylvania's architecture department, Lin Huayin was still able to work there as a teaching assistant. 
at the time, they did not allow women to graduate with architecture degrees. So she graduated with a Bachelor of Fine Arts, even though she took almost all the classes that the architecture students did. So she really did study to be an architect. Even though the architecture department would not admit Lin Hui Yin as a student, it couldn't keep her from studying architecture. Her file also contains a copy of an interview the Montana Herald newspaper conducted with her in 1926. Lin Hui Yin told the reporter, When I go home to Peking, I'll carry back to my country the message of a true meeting of East and West. We're distressed to see our native and uniquely original art being exploited through the wild craze for keeping up with the world. There is a movement to show to the students and people of China Western attainments in art, literature, music and drama, but not to take the place of our own, never. We must learn the fundamental principles of all art, but only in order to apply them to designs distinctly ours. Lin Hui Ying concluded the interview with the words, In China, a girl is worth only as much as her family stands for. Here, there's a spirit of democracy that I admire. Chinese students in the United States at the time tended to keep a low profile, with the exception of two of them, Chen Zhu and Lin Hui Yin. Chen Zhu had been a fellow student of Liang Sicheng's at Tsinghua Academy, an energetic student and been class president. However, because he was very short, someone had written in the school yearbook that he would never grow up. 